All right, welcome back to Inside Scoop. This is Sean Emery. It's Friday, May 10th. Dutch Bros just reported. Starbucks reported a week ago. Big difference. You know, I am Sean Emery, the founder and CIO, Chief Investment Officer of Avery & Company, an investment firm here in Miami. We invest where the world is headed. You know, we do so through separately managed accounts with conviction, you know, eight to 25 companies in our premier growth strategy. And, you know, premier plus is 25 stock minimum. Um, reach out to us if you, you want any more information on that. But today it's it's really around, you know, the difference between Dutch Bros and Starbucks. Also a little bit of tidbits on, you know, maybe what we're seeing in the in the retail space as it relates to, you know, Fiserv data that, you know, came out for, for April traffic trends. You know, but I, I think the star of the show is that Starbucks and Dutch Bros are, are somewhat going in different directions. So let me, you know, illustrate the difference between the two from a high level you have Starbucks, a mass market, you know, call it premium-ish uh, offering that, you know, delivers the product through more traditional brick and mortar strategy. You know, you come, you pick up and, and, and you know, they're everywhere now. You have someone such as, you know, Dutch Bros, which is taking a, a much different uh, approach to it, which is, you know, instead of buying, you know, a small coffee or an espresso, you know, it's really around these more decadent offerings but also around uh, the delivery of that is through a drive-through mechanism. Now that's not entirely new, but it's entirely new more so at scale and only drive-through with you know an evolution of some pickup at these locations. So these are small boxes where you know people don't go and sit down; that you you literally just drive through. Now the Dutch Bros. Business has you know 187 you know 876 uh, locations. They added 160 uh, company operated stores year over year. They added another 144 franchised. They're in 17 different states. They're mostly on the West Coast, but moving to the East Coast. Just opened up one up in Orlando, in Florida. They have you know multiple uh, locations now, and it's truly kind of this newer offering that's a little bit different from traditional and it's resonating and it's resonating in the numbers beyond just unit counts it's resonating in margins C company operated shop contribution margins are at 29.8 percent up from 24.2 it's resonating in revenue 275 million last quarter uh, up from 197 million that's growth of you know 39 percent for their their own stores and 43 percent for their franchise locations so you're seeing growth in units growth in revenue, uh, growth in margin at the same time, which is, you know, this counterbalance, which is interesting. But most importantly, actually, is you're seeing same store shop is how they call it, but same store sales growth of 10% system wide. So they saw 10% system wide same store sales growth, you know, going back to the chart I'm looking at right now, that's one of the strongest they've ever seen, uh, specifically, you know, over the last, you know, three, four years. And the the most important part of this is you know that the the counter of the, to that is to someone like Starbucks, which revenue went down two percent to eight point six billion dollars. Their you know their transaction or their same store sales was negative six percent. Again, that that's against ten percent. And same store sales, you know, this takes out size. This doesn't necessarily matter about size and scale. This doesn't necessarily matter about when or how. Um, it's really a like for like basis when you're comparing the two. So negative six for Starbucks and positive 10 for Dutch bros. That alone, you know, should strike some fear inside of some of, you know, Starbucks investors. Now we know this is a brand that has brand strength. I'm talking about uh, Starbucks that is, but the question is what's wrong and what could potentially, you know, uh, come about to, you know, cure this this issue that's taking place. But negative 6% comps, I'm looking back at the chart. Um, you know, you have to go all the way back to September of 2020. You know, they saw a negative, uh, what is that, 51% comp. Obviously, that's through COVID. Uh, negative 13% comp uh, in the March quarter of that year. So clearly, you know, you have to go all the way back to when things were shut down to get to negative numbers like this. Um, for comp sales, sales. So the bigger question for 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 us, for everyone, you know, looking at these two stories is re really around, you know, what's driving the difference. Um, I think, 
you know, for a while people were concerned that Dutch bros would be impacted, you know, by Starbucks, meaning, you know, you have this growth story that's emerging, but you have the incumbent like Starbucks that could, you know, evolve their platform and get these more decadent type of offerings and, you know, force, you know, Dutch bros to either like lower prices or things like that. That hasn't been the case. Um, Dutch Bros is, is getting really creative. Uh, so they obviously, they offered or launched a loyalty program. We think again, when you have a brand and then you attach mobile and loyalty to it, very similar to our investment years ago in, in Chipotle, that's kind of like a launch pad to growth because it, it takes your most loyal customers, assuming you have this brand that has real identity to it, which Dutch Bros tends to have. Um, they're really about that service, which I think we all remember in the early days of Starbucks when you showed up and they wrote your name on the cup, that felt like a one-to-one -one relationship between you and the person and, and you and the brand. And I'd argue it's a much more transactional today. And Dutch Bros is kind of having, like, that was all Starbucks commentary, but the the, the, the difference is Dutch Bros is, is emphasizing that. So while they have this mobile, you know, um, loyalty program that they've launched, and I believe last quarter it was like 60 to 70% of all the transactions happen through loyalty program or members. Um, it is one where they're continuing to emphasize relationships and experience and customer service. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a coffee is coffee and it really comes down to brand identity and that brand being attached to some sort of experiential moment that you feel. Um, and I think, you know, value and price and, and some of the nuances there as well. But, you know, one thing to point out that I think Dutch Bros understands, and we've talked to the company a lot of times, we just visited their location in, in Arizona, and I'll bring that up in a second, which is Dutch Bros just launched the loyalty program in an application a couple of years ago now. They also then uh, just recently launched uh, mobile ordering. And, you know, when you think of mobile ordering, you think almost like order ahead and then come pick it up. But actually, it's not that way. You know, when we visited, the mobile ordering is what, when, once you're on site, it's mobile ordering. And then they've developed these escape lanes within the, the drive through because, again, Dutch Bros is, is just drive through And it allows you to escape if you pick up your order. But the key for them and why they don't want just simply uh, order ahead and then just come pick it up and kind of walk away when your, your thing is ready is they want you to continue to experience the customer service that uh, Dutch Bros offers, which is they come, they're, they're, they're you know, semi-trained to learn your name, um, say your name, um, talk to you. Like a, when you hear on the earnings call, they emphasize that a lot. It's like we are... Our, our, baristas in a way, right? Um, or broistas, I think is the, the way they, they reference it, you know, are, are essentially trained to, to communicate with you. And they hire people specifically for that, um, that, you know, want to have these conversations. And, you know, I think that's the difference. I think that's the biggest difference here is you have an indulgent product, you know, they, they've streamed away a little bit from, you know, you're more traditional. They've been a little bit more innovative. So, you know, this quarter they called out protein. So protein uh, coffee. Uh, you can get like 20 grams of protein in a in a coffee. I don't know all the nuances to that. And then they also added boba, like the little boba teas, but little bobas inside of coffee as well. So a little bit more, again, experiential um, in, in the way they're delivering it as well. They think that's going to be, you know, a catalyst for new offerings within those categories, whether it's protein or boba. Um, so again, I think they're hitting on experience. They're hitting on you know, developing their, their technology stack. Um, they're hitting on, and they're, they're using Olo, by the way. And so we found that out, uh, you know, a couple weeks back. But um, that's a side note for anyone looking at Olo as a, you know, investment. But the, again, wrapping it all up, horrible quarter for Starbucks. There's something wrong there. What they're trying to do is, is discount. You know, I just posted on, on, on X, um, which my, my handles, you know, at underscore, you know, Sean, David, S E A N D A V I D. Um, so go follow me there, but I just posted a, a, a notice I got today from Starbucks, 50% off from 12 to six. And th all of this is like fairly counter to the legacy brand, the brand that Starbucks has developed, which is premium offering and on their earnings call. And even, you know, some of the follow back follow-up calls, 
conversations was, you know, they're going to lean in on discounting to bring back the price increases that they already took. So, you know, hint on, on deflation coming, at least at Starbucks. Um, but again, is that, is that the right strategy? And I, and I turn that to you guys, you know, hit me up on, on X. Is that the right strategy for Starbucks to, you know, lean in on the discounting side? And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, you, you don't like Dutch bros or you like Dutch bros, like what's your thoughts there? I would love to, to pick your brain, but you know, that's how we're looking at it. You, you have a growth engine in, in, um, in, uh, in Dutch bros doing all the right things and checking off the boxes that I think all ultimately what made, you know, Starbucks somewhat special at, at, at a point in time, service, execution, you know, premium offering, but not like overly, overly priced, I guess. Um, and it seems like they're going the other way. So, you know, while mid twenties multiple for such a premium brand for Starbucks, you know, feels interesting at the very least. Uh, the question is, is like, you know, are they, are they doing the right thing right now? Um, so that's something to think about. Lastly, just to give you a sense of the, I promised the data around um, the April trends for retail. And I'll, I'll just be quick here. Um, so you basically had total retail sales April 1st to April 25th fell 0.6, stemming from a 2.8% drop in average ticket and partly offset by 2.3% gain in transactions. So more transactions happened in April. And again, this is all retail sales using Fiserv data. Just giving you that um, as I step away. So with that, you know, we'll have a couple more episodes here, you know, one specifically on Fiverr and their earnings report, and then a couple others. So, you know, subscribe and we will be back next week uh, with some more earnings reports.